Number one. Me and some friends went to an abandoned mental asylum at night, not really expecting much. We busted in one of the boarded up windows and when we were inside, we all heard talking. We figured other people were there, so we followed the sound. We're walking down the hall and heard what sounded like a woman whispering, why did you take my baby? Over and over again. At this point, I'm visibly shaking and we all believed we found where the sound was coming from. We go in this room and there was a huge cage. It looked like one of those pet carriers, but human sized. I don't know what the fuck happened that night. I don't really believe dead people were talking in there, but the sheer creepiness, it was just all too fucking much for me. Number two. My cousin and his family, wife and infant son, had lived in this house for about five years. His wife left home to drop the baby off at daycare before work, but realized she had left her phone at home. Entering the house, she turned the corner in the hallway and nearly ran into the dropped down attic ladder which was fully extended. They never used the attic and it was filled with loose insulation and my cousin had left for work hours earlier. She quietly left the house, drove around the corner and called the police. When the police investigated, they found a short range transmitter connected to several cameras hidden throughout their home. The light fixture in the shower, the ceiling fan above their bed, even a pinhole in the nursery were sending videos to a nearby location. Their neighbor a few houses away had been given a key by the prior owners and installed surveillance equipment once he knew their schedule. My cousin's wife walked in on him updating his equipment, but he forgot something at his house and left to get it when she walked in. He'd been watching them for years. Number three. Worked at a woman's clothing mail order catalog call center. During training, a veteran worker was talking about getting to know frequent callers and the story of one of them. So, old lady used to call in often. She was blind, but would have someone help her pick out things. The manager of an apartment complex, I believe. She would order often, and they got to know her by name. Well, eventually she stopped calling in, so they contacted the number they had for her, which was the apartment manager's number. Old lady was fine, but had to be moved into a new building. Well, the reason why the old lady had to be moved was because the old lady was very meticulous with her cleaning. She cleaned very often at old lady level. So the manager had come to do in some maintenance for the first time in many months. Every room in her apartment above head level had thick webs and nests of black widow spiders. Hundreds and hundreds. Can you imagine an oblivious old lady walking around blind in a house she thinks is spotlessly clean? There's a soul freezing nightmare swarming all over the ceiling. Number four. This actually happened to a friend of mine. She used to live in an entirely different town when she was younger, and her closet had a strange door in the back of it. Well, whether it was imagined just due to her being a child at the time, or if it really did happen, she started to hear noises from behind this door. She only heard them when she went to bed, of course. She told me that several times she tried telling her parents that she was hearing these noises, but they never believed her. So some time goes by and one day her parents get a call from the police because they just arrested a homeless man. That was not just any homeless man though. This homeless man, well, was living in some sort of tunnel that goes straight to the door to door of her closet. So every once in a while, for whatever reason, this man would come through that door and watch my friend sleep in her closet. Number five. My gran was in the local town doing her shopping and running various errands. On her way home, she met with one of our neighbors out doing their gardening. She stopped, asked how they were, they had a chat, and gran came home. When she got in, my granddad asked how a town had been, if she had met anyone on the way. Gran started talking about the neighbor. Granddad interrupted her. Mrs. Black? We were at her funeral two weeks ago. Apparently, gran nearly passed out once she had realized. Number 6. True story about my grandmother who takes place before they had children. My grandpa, Daryl, worked night shifts so my grandmother, Dora, was home alone most nights. Her sister-in-law, Rose, would randomly come over to keep her company. Dora decided to go to bed early one night. Rose came over that night to see how she was doing. She went to Dora's bedroom after calling for her and the only reply she got was, I'm in bed, just come up. Upon entering the room, Rose started acting weird and telling her she really wanted her to come help her with something in the kitchen. Dora was already ready to sleep and was already in bed and she really didn't want to. Rose was really adamant for her to come help her, telling her it was urgent. After a while, Dora eventually got up and followed Rose to the kitchen. 
Upon entering, Rose whispered in panic, with tears in her eyes. There's a man under your bed, with a knife. Dora, of course, didn't believe her at first, but seeing the panic in Rose's eyes, she couldn't not believe her. They proceeded to call the cops and left to the neighbor's house. The cops came and found a man hiding in the closet with a butcher's knife. And that's the story of how my grandmother was almost murdered and why I still this day is a 30-year-old man, chick under my bed. Number 7. My friend was visiting family in the States. They lived in a rural community of Maine and one morning she woke up before everyone else did and decided to go for a run. After 30 minutes, she turned back and started noticing a van following her a few blocks behind her. She thought it was strange, so started running down a few more streets with the van following every move. She started sprinting, and the van sped up too. She ran to the first house she could find and started banging on the door. No answer. She hopped the fence and started banging on the back door. Dog in the house started barking at her, but no one answered. She jumped in the empty pool in the backyard and hid while dialing 911. A car parked in front of the house and a man started calling out for her, offering her a ride home. The dog in the house was now barking like crazy, and the man left after about a minute. Police showed up and took her back to the family's place. She gave a report and they identified the man from nearby HVAC business. He had recently been stolen that day.